Summers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and this week I'm going to show you how to solo the shores of Tripoli uh, from Fort Circle Games. This is a game designed by Kevin Bertram, and it is a game in which there are two sides. You have the United States and you have the Tripolitan Pirates. The United States wants to force a, quote, peace treaty on the Tripolitan Pirates. The pirates just want to raid and make some money, and uh, we'll see who wins. In the solo version of the game, you can only play as the United States against Tripoli. So I'm going to be showing you how the T-Bot works. So here is a game all set up for some solo play. And as I mentioned, there are victory conditions for each side. The American player is going to win the game by either forcing the Tripolitan player to sign a peace treaty or by capturing Tripoli and having Hemet's army ready so that you can put Hemet Karamanli on the throne. He's the brother of the current leader of the Tripolitans. Each side has their own deck. There is a card in the American deck that is actually just called the Treaty of Peace and Amity. Ha, huh, Amity, yeah, okay. But if you play the card, then you're able to end the game victorious, but you have to beat some requirements that are on the card. So it has to be the fall of 1805 or later. As you can see, there is a strict timeline on this game. You start in 1801, you go through the seasons of each year. The last year of play is 1806. All three potential Tripolitan allies need to be at peace. So that means that orange Corsair boats, which are over there in the Tripolitan supply, cannot be just sitting around at Tunis, Algiers, or Tangier. The city of Dern has to have been captured by Hemet's army. So Dern is over here. And there must be no Tripolitan frigates, which are the bigger ships in the harbor of Tripoli. So you have to get a lot done in order for this victory condition to work. The Americans definitely have their work cut out for them. The other option for the American player is to win by capturing Tripoli. So in order to do that, you have to play a card that's called Assault on Tripoli. And then once you've played that card, you get a big epic battle and you have to eliminate the Tripolitan Navy in naval combat. And then you have to take out the Tripolitan army. So those are the cubes in ground combat. So in each of these harbors, you can have boats and you can also have cubes. So the cubes are land units, the boats are sea units, and we'll see a little bit more about that as we, as we do some sample play. So basically as an American, you can meet a whole bunch of conditions or you can win a giant epic naval battle, both of which have to happen at the end of the game in order to win. You can't just do a big swift one-two punch on the first turn. You're gonna have to bide your time and figure out what to do about the Tripolitans. The Tripolitans, on the other hand, just have to make the United States life annoying enough that they uh, that they give up and go away. So one way for the Tripolitan player to do that is to acquire 12 gold. There are 12 gold pieces right here. If the Tripolitan player manages to transfer all 12 of the gold from my treasury to theirs, then I lose because they took so much of my money. It just got too expensive to deal with this crap. The other way for me to lose is if the Tripolitan player sinks four American frigates. So frigates are these larger ships. The smaller ones are Corsairs, or if they're the blue American ones, they're called gunboats. So you have big boat, little boat. That's about as complicated as it gets. But if the Tripolitan player manages to sink four of my large American frigates, then the game also ends immediately. This can happen in naval combat, which I will have to get into from time to time if I want to win. If neither side has won by the end of 1806, then you have a draw. So once again, the goal of the game is for me to either destroy Tripoli's entire army, naval and land in one of the later years of the game, or to have fulfilled enough conditions to force a peace treaty, which also requires a lot of battle and a lot of area control. Our pirates, on the other hand, just get to take the money and run or sink enough of my ships in naval combat that it's just over. So in terms of play, I'm gonna play a few sample turns, maybe a year. Uh, and what you're gonna see is me carrying out American play as normal. So you get to play your own side the normal way, just like you would in a two person game. And then we're up against the T-Bot and I have a bunch of cards that are just set up for T-Bot that I'm gonna explain. So everybody has a hand limit, but we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Outside of your hand limit, everybody gets some event cards. The event cards for Tripoli are different in the regular game. So are some of the counts of infantry and Corsairs that are in each of the harbors. So do not take this setup and then try to play a two player game. This is the one player setup. But over here for America, we're gonna have three event cards that can be played whenever we want. One is Thomas Jefferson. So I can move up to eight American frigates and resolve any battles that result. So if I need to make a big move, this card is waiting for me. 
This one is place two Swedish frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli. The Swedish frigates are these nice yellow ones. The American pieces are blue. And also these white cubes here are Arab forces that are part of Hemet's army. So once we form Hemet's army and try to take over Dern, you would see some of those on the board. And then speaking of, we have Hemet's army created. So that's playable if it's spring of 1804 or later. And there's at least one American frigate in the harbor of Alexandria. So you have to be planning to make sure your, your little dudes are in the right places at the right times. You place one Marine and five Arab infantry units in the city of Alexandria. One thing that's important about all of these core event cards is as it'll tell you at the bottom, once you've played it, you remove it entirely from the game. So there's some cards that go into your discard pile when you play them, whether it's for the event or to discard them, which we'll talk about momentarily. Some just come out of the game right away. Once you've played them, they're a one shot. Over here on the Tripolitan side, there are also some events that, that can automatically be played. And it's up to you because you're the only sentient player in this game to keep track of what's been triggered, which I think is probably the most irritating part of the solo game. None of, it's, none of the game is particularly difficult. It's actually a very quick, speedy game to play, but you have to be very alert to what is on the cards. So once you get to know the cards, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you're still learning, you're gonna miss a lot of triggers and not play cards when you're supposed to and you'll get a little bit vexed, but don't worry about it, you're learning. But the events for this little game are Murad Race Breaks Out. So you move the two Tripolitan Corsairs from the harbor of Gibraltar to the harbor of Tripoli. Any American frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar may first make an interception roll. So basically every time our little enemy Corsair ships try to come out and raid, we have the option, if there are ships in the harbors, to try to shoot them down on the way out into the open sea. So if at the beginning of the game, I wanted to move all of my American frigates over here to Tripoli, I leave it wide open for these boats to leave, or I can leave someone here and try to shoot them on the way out. And in the solo game that actually does impact when you play this card, on the back of the rule book, there are descriptions of when you would play each card. So here you have Marad Race Breaks Out. Play if there are no frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar, that's this white part, or if it is the winter of 1801. So by the time we make it to winter of this year, 1801, these guys are going to make a break for it no matter what. So I have to make choices about whether I want to leave someone there to shoot them or just forget it, whatever it is I want to do. We have Constantinople sends aid, and this is playable if Hemet's army has captured Dern. So basically, once we create that army and start moving it, there's an event to respond to that. So these, these decks are very, they're asymmetrical, but they have cards that are direct responses to each other. This one is Yusuf Karamanli. Uh, place, do a pirate raid with the Corsairs from the harbor of Tripoli and the Corsairs from the harbor of each active ally. So if you were playing as the Tripolitans, you want to save it until you had a bunch of annoying little ships in all of your ally cities and in Tripoli. And then this one is Sweden pays tribute, playable if it is 1803 or later. And there are Swedish frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli. So you return the Swedish frigates to the supply and then you receive two gold coins. So I have a card that allows me to put the Swedish frigates out they have a card that eventually forces me to put them back and pay them some money. So I get the help of those ships, but then I also have to calculate in a loss later, and I know exactly how long those ships are gonna stay. So these are the event cards, but of course you're not gonna trigger an event every single time, and like the American events, they get removed right after you play them, so they also just won't be in the game forever, even if they do all get triggered pretty fast. So that's what these solo cards are for. These essentially drive the main force of the game for you. So the one you're gonna be looking at a lot is the five Corsair check. So if there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor of Tripoli, the Tripoli performs a pirate raid. So right now there are in fact five Corsairs in Tripoli. We know exactly what the T-Bot is going to do on turn one because we already know. If however they have a bunch of unsuccessful raids and we knock out a bunch of their boats, there's something built in so that they will take an action that corresponds to that situation. So if the T-Bot performs the five Corsair check and it fails, it does not have five or more Corsairs, then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna draw a card from the draw pile, which is how you get cards from this deck into the game. And then you are going to consult those cards requirements. So some of these cards will cause special conditions to occur in the game. Others are going to direct you to perform the raid or build action. So raid or build means that if you can't just raid based on the five Corsair check, you instead check to see if you have a bunch of Corsairs in Tangier, Algiers, Tunis, or in Tripoli. And if you happen to outnumber the American and Swedish frigates in those areas, then you can perform a raid. If you can't do that, then you just place another Corsair in the harbor of Tripoli. 
So basically the T-Bot is set up to either play an annoying event at you, do a pirate raid, or build up in order to perform a pirate raid. So there's a lot of cards lying out there, but really what the T-Bot does is pretty straightforward. You just have to make sure that you're paying attention to what cards are coming out and what they're supposed to do. There are also six battle cards down here. These are not played as events. These are played when certain things happen in a battle or during a pirate raid. You're gonna see a couple on the sample turns because they happen pretty automatically. And then I'll leave you to discover the rest in a fuller game. But you have to know what's on these cards and what's gonna trigger them in order to make sure that you are playing correctly against yourself. And then of course you just shuffle your normal card decks. So we've got the Thomas Jefferson deck for the Americans, uh, the Yusuf Karamanli deck for the Tripolitans, and these are shuffled and ready to go. So this is what setup looks like. We've got our frigates ready here. They've got their Corsairs and infantry ready in various harbors. We've got our time markers. And then every year the American force is going to increase in size. So we pick up ships as time goes by. Things are definitely more weighted towards the Tripolitans at the beginning of the game. The American's job is to build up and then control and ultimately defeat them by the end of the game. And I'll be showing you just a sample year so we can see how that works. So let's play out the year of 1801, and I'll walk you through the turn structure. So play always starts with the Americans. That means that I'm gonna go first against the T-Bot. So I'm gonna draw six cards, and let's just kind of see what we got. So this is a very good card, enable movement. I can move up to four American frigates and resolve any battles that result. That's awesome. I got Corsairs confiscated. I can play this if there are any Tripolitan Corsairs in the harbor of Gibraltar. I can return all the Corsairs from that harbor to the supply, and I can remove Maraud Race Breaks out from the game, which is great because that actually gives me a little starting advantage against the Corsairs who were chilling in Gibraltar. Excellent. Here I have Marine Sharpshooters. I might not want this right now because it's playable at the start of a land battle, and it affects the roll on which Marine Infantry units hit. I don't even have any Marine Infantry units out right now, so I'm gonna probably discard that card for some other reason, which I will show you how to do. Same thing here, General Eaton attacks Durham. I can't have Hemet's army yet. This card doesn't have any use to me right now in terms of its event, so I'll be using it as a discard, and we'll talk through that as I take you through the turn. Here we have Tribute Paid. I can move one American frigate to the harbor of an active ally of Tripoli, so Algiers, Tangier, or Tunis. And I can return all the Corsairs from that harbor to the supply and get two gold coins. Maybe not useful to me right now, but certainly down the line. And then I have Lieutenant Starrett in Pursuit, playable when making an interception roll, which I'm going to be showing you very shortly. Each American frigate can roll three dice instead of two. So if I want to play this as a battle card, I only get it one time. So I want to choose the right moments to use it, which may just be earlier because this is a sample turn. So I'll just show you. And then there we are. Those are my cards. I will only be playing some of these cards this year. And then next year I'm going to get more cards. Your hand limit is eight. So part of this game is also deciding which cards to keep in your hand, which cards to discard. Eventually you'll get to pull your whole discard pile in your hand and choose among those cards. So you never have to worry about discarding something on the first turn and never seeing it again. That's not gonna happen. Your deck is actually quite small. So feel free to dump what you need to dump. All right, so let's walk through my options for a turn. As we've discussed already, not all these cards are immediately useful. So basically when you play this game, you can either play a card for its event. If there's no special text at the bottom, you play it for the event, discard it, you'll see it again later. Or if you play it for an event and it has this red text at the bottom, you're going to ditch that card from the game forever once you've played it for the event. But if the event's not immediately useful to you, then you have another option, which is you can discard a card. If you discard one of your cards, then you either get to move two frigates on the board. So I can discard a card and move two of my boats somewhere, anywhere I wanted to move them. The other option when you discard a card is that you build a gunboat in Malta. So you can build up a little stash of gunboats who show up when you have a battle and then they roll extra dice for you and then they return to Malta. So that's not necessarily the most exciting play, but it can come in handy later. So I already know I don't need this General Eaton Attacks Durn card right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and discard it. And I'm gonna use it to move two of my frigates to come here and patrol Tripoli because I am not interested in these dudes breaking out and causing too much havoc out here in the seas. I could have played naval movement, which allows me to move up to four frigates, but I didn't want to do that. First of all, I don't even have four frigates on the board and I want to save this, it's a nice card. But also I did want to leave someone here in Gibraltar 
specifically because the T-Bot is now about to take a turn. That's right, I've already had my spring turn, that was it, it's their turn now. Um, and I know that they're gonna try to do Maraud Race Breaks Out, but I know that they won't if I've got somebody patrolling the harbor, blah ha ha ha. So now it's the T-Bot's turn. So as I was discussing, uh, Maraud Race is not gonna break out because you can only play that card if there are no forgets in the Naval Patrol Zone of Gibraltar, or if it's the winner of 1801. It is spring, it is not winter yet, I still got time to deal with those Corsairs. And I already know, it's not time for Constantinople Sins Aid, it's not time for Yusuf Karmanli, and it's not time for Sweden Pays Tribute. There aren't even any Swedish frigates here, and it's not 1803 yet. So I already know we're not triggering any of these event cards at this time. So in order to proceed with the T-Bot's turn, we're going to go here to the five Corsair check. So if there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor, Tripoli, Tripoli performs a pirate raid. So there are in fact one, two, three, four, five Corsairs hanging out in the harbor of Tripoli. They are going to perform a pirate raid. So first what's going to happen is if there are any frigates that are patrolling in that naval patrol zone outside of the harbor, uh, then I get to make what's called an interception roll. I get to roll two dice for each of my frigates and a roll of six is a hit that will seek a Corsair. So I can roll four dice to try to roll some sixes and take out one of them, maybe, you know, the odds aren't super hot. As you can see, this game's got a bunch of dice in it. Let's just grab four blue American dice. At some point, I will just quit caring about color, to be honest. And we're gonna roll, let's see what happens. All right, so I did not get any sixes. I got a couple fives, but no dice, y'all. So that means I managed to do nothing to these lovely Corsairs who are now gonna get to go and raid at their leisure. Oops. If I had sunk one, I would move it to the supply. Now the Tripolitan player would, in a two-player game, announce if any battle cards will be played. I know that we're gonna play one because we have happy hunting here in the battle cards. So it's playable when making a pirate raid with Tripolitan Corsairs. Roll three additional dice. So they're gonna get three dice automatically. We're just gonna leave these three blue American dice there because I already told you, I'm, I'm lazy. And then each of the Corsairs, so one, two, four, five, is gonna roll one die. So let's, so there's five more dice, one for each Corsair. Got our little dice pool, they're gonna roll. And basically on a five or a six, they're gonna have a successful raid and they'll get to get a merchant ship, which means that they're gonna get a gold from me. So. Please don't let them roll well. This will go into discard. So let's roll. Uh-oh, okay. So these guys got three fives. So what that means is they had three successes. So I only get success on a six. These jerks get a five or six success. How rude. So they've already taken three coins from me. So three gold will be transferred from me to these pirates. <sighs> All right, so not only did their successful raid make me lose three gold, but they also have a card that is played according to the rule book on their first successful raid, which it was successful, called Merchant Ship Converted. Playable if a Tripolitan Pirate raid has just been successful, place one at Tripolitan Corsair in the harbor of Tripoli. So basically they got another little boat in here to annoy me. They got some money and they managed to get another boat as well. Ugh. But now it's summer. We've each gone, it's my turn again. I think this time I'm gonna play Swedish Frigates Arrive. So we already know that the um, the Tripolitan army is going to be able to force Sweden to pay tribute later in 1803. So I wanna get these Swedish ships here now so that I am able to make the most use of them before they go away and I lose money over it. So I'm gonna remove this from the game. Swedish Frigates Arrive to get played. These guys come here into the harbor with me. There are now four boats there. And that was my entire turn for the summer. So as you can see, this game is pretty snappy. So uh, Maraud Race Breaks Out is not gonna happen because again, I've got somebody who's monitoring Gibraltar and it's not winter yet. I do have a plan for these guys with the cards in my hand, but you can only play one card per turn. Made sense to get the Swedes out ASAP. We are not gonna trigger any of the other event cards. So we're gonna go right back to the five course here check. So once again, if there are five or more Corsairs in the Harbor of Tripoli, and there are six, we're gonna have a pirate raid. I get to roll an interception roll first. Let's pretend that we care about colors again, just cause it's cute, you know? So we got four US dice, four Swedish dice, eight dice total. And let's see if I can get any sixes this time. Wish me luck. All right, so this time we got two sixes, one from me, one from them. How nice, working together as friends. 
two of these go back to the supply. That means, however, that four of them are still left. So we're just going to leave four dice in the pool. And we're going to roll them and see if I get any five or sixes for a successful raid from them. All right, so this time that sucked. <laughs> So they got two fives and two sixes. They took four more coins from me. That that was bad, y'all. So great. They've almost half won. They've they've already like passed half won this game. They got seven coins. Oh man. <laughs> Good thing this is just a sample turn, so you don't have to witness my inevitable humiliating defeat. Gee hee hees. But that was their that was their deal. So that was a rough one. But you know, it's another season. We're coming into the fall. I think what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and play Corsairs Confiscated. So this card says playable if there are Tripolitan Corsairs in the harbor of Gibraltar. Return all Corsairs from the harbor to the supply and remove Maraud Race Breaks out from the game. So I can take these dudes out, put them in supply, and take this card away. It's out of the game. And of course, this card is also now out of the game because I played it as an event, so it's gone. But now I can move this guy over here later without any concern, which I think is pretty good. Once again, it is the T-Bot's turn, but this time they don't actually pass the five Corsair check because there are only four Corsairs left in the harbor. So what that means is that we are gonna draw a card from the deck and see what it tells us to do. So let's go ahead and draw. We got Morocco declares war. So this says place three Moroccan Corsairs in the harbor of Tangier, but let's make sure that's what we do because it is solo rules we're going by. So, yep, we are going to play it immediately. Uh-oh, we're gonna place three Moroccan Corsairs in the harbor of Tangier. So Moroccan Corsairs, this is now removed from the game, are these orange ones because they're not from Tripoli. And now they're gonna hang over here and make trouble. So it's probably good that I left somebody over here and we're gonna get another boat next year. We can do something maybe about what's up in Tangier. All right, so that was their go. Now it is winter, let's see what we wanna do. I don't wanna play naval movement yet because I don't wanna move. I don't have any land battles coming up. Ooh, I could do tribute paid. I can move one American frigate from the harbor to the harbor of an active ally of Tripoli and return all of the Corsairs from that harbor to the supply. But then the Tripolitan player receives two gold coins. I don't know if I want to do that yet. Oh my God, I'm so low on supply. So this game actually definitely has a good push and pull to it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead for now and I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build a gunboat. So I'm gonna dish Marine Sharpshooters right now because we don't need it. So this just goes in the regular discard. It'll come back to put a gunboat at Malta. So the next time I get into it with somebody, I've got a gunboat to help me out. However, I might regret that. So I've taken a risk because it is now once again the T-Bot's turn, but they didn't play raid or build, which means that they never built another ship here. So they don't pass the five Corsair check, which means they're not gonna raid where I have most of my dudes. Instead, well, we're gonna draw a card and see what happens. So this time we got US supplies run low. Remove one American frigate from any naval patrol zone to the harbor of Malta. Let's see if that is what we in fact do. Okay, so when the, what this one says is, if there are exactly two American frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli, play immediately, otherwise discard to perform a raid or build action. There are in fact exactly two American frigates, so one of mine will get moved to Malta to have to be moved out later, so it just messes up my card economy. Then we discard this card. So it actually could have been a lot worse. Uh, if we played raid or build, there are at least three Boats here in Tangier, they certainly outnumber the frigates patrolling the harbor. These guys would have auto raided over here and there would have been nothing I could do about it. They just get to roll three dice and try to take some more of my money, which as you can probably guess is not so hot. That would have taken us all the way out of the winter into the spring of 1802, which would give me another boat here at Gibraltar and we would have reset for another turn. That would have meant that I drew another six cards And I already have three in my hand. Your hand limit is eight. So I would have looked through these cards, picked something to discard, and started our next year with eight cards in my hand, plus my event cards. And we would have played this out again for another year. 
Since this was just a sample set of turns and it doesn't show you the full complexity of the game, I'm going to talk about just a couple more things that are in the rules before I let you go in case you just wanted that explanation. So there are other options for things to do other than deal with pirate raids. And those things include naval battles. So if I wanted to have a battle, what I would do is I would play a card for movement and I would be able to move a number of ships of my choosing, plus a gunboat from Malta if I wanted support, into a harbor, not a patrol area, but a harbor that has enemy ships. When you go into a harbor instead of a patrol area, you directly attack them and you have a naval battle. When you get into a naval battle, you have to announce what cards you're going to play. But of course, we'll just decide for ourselves and then look at whatever the T-Bot has and figure out from there. Each frigate rolls two dice, so big ship, two dice. Corsairs roll one die, so little ship, one die. And then whoever the active player is is going to go first. So if we initiate the battle, we go first. If the T-Bot initiates the battle, they would roll first. And then in this case, it's not a five or a six. You have to roll a six to be a hit. Gunboats or Corsairs can only take one hit. Frigates can take two to sink. So basically, because one of the winning conditions for the T-Bot is to take out four of your frigates, you want to be really careful with those and you get to choose some of how your damage is allocated. So you do not want to allocate two damage to one of your frigates unless you really must because it, then it will sink. If it just gets one hit to it, it's damage and you have to put it back on the turn track. So basically you lose it until the next year for repairs, but that's better than losing it to the T-Bot. If you move into a harbor like this one where there aren't any boats, then what you're doing is a naval bombardment. So what you're doing is you're rolling to see if you can like shoot any of the guys that are on land and eliminate armies here. So that's a way to provide support. If you think that you're going to have a land battle, which is going to be a necessary thing to do, no matter what wind condition the Americans want. So ground combat's going to happen when you've got Hamet's army and you start moving it. And ground combat is different from naval combat because after naval combat, maybe nobody got hit. Maybe everybody lived and you just moved everything back to Malta. So all of your ships that participate in naval combat and survive, get bumped out of the harbor, they go back to Malta, then you have to move them with your cards, but you live to fight another day. For land combat, however, that battle will just go on until one force has been entirely eliminated. So once again, each roll of six is a hit and you get to allocate your, your hits as you wish. If you have ships involved in the battle, then you can make choices about whether to allocate a hit to one of your ships or to one of your land units. But basically you just repeat rolls until one side has everybody dead. So that's pretty dramatic. So yeah, overall, this is a very simple game. As you can see, once you're going, the turns move really, really quickly. Once you know all of the cards, you pretty much know what to trigger when, and it stops being a little bit stressful to play the T-Bot. So I'm like two or three times in, you're gonna be totally fine. And all the combat is resolved with really, really straightforward die rolls that are sometimes modified by cards that come from the deck. You'll get the occasional fun surprise. But that is an overview of how to solo the shores of Tripoli. Hopefully this will help you figure out whether you want to play the game. I personally think it's fun and quick. Although if you play it a whole bunch of times in a row, things kind of follow a set pattern. So there is that to consider. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. It means a lot to me when you do. Leave a comment if you got one. And Happy gaming, everybody.